Just had a brain blast, baby. And that's how you're gonna feel as soon as you play some intelligence operative. Let's get on in this bad boy, shall we? Now, before we hop into this, I, if you're gonna play an intelligence operative, you gotta be pretty smart, right? You gotta know what you're doing. And you know what'll make you real smart? Subscribing to the channel, that's right. There is a chance that you subscribe and immediately gain 10 more points to your IQ score. I can't promise anything, but it's not impossible. Your odds aren't zero. Why not take the chance? I'm just saying, it's worth a shot. Thank you. Now getting straight into the video, you're making an intelligence operative. Obviously, going into character creation, you're gonna be a smart boy. So going ahead and talking about ability scores. Oh, I love it. it, it never gets old. You're gonna wanna put a lot into intelligence. And if you couldn't figure that out, you probably shouldn't be playing this character. No offense, I'm just saying that should have been clear and that this character's about being smart and I just feel like that should have not taken much thought. Now, after you make intelligence your highest, it's pretty free reign, honestly, as to what you want to do besides that. You could throw it into decks if you want your guy to be able to move around the battlefield really fast, which can be helpful, and have a decently high AC. You could throw it into con if you want someone that's maybe a little tankier and then also has quite a bit of chakra. You could even do something like charisma, in which case, if you do that, one, you'll be really good at persuasion things, which is pretty nice for someone that's also really smart. But also, sometimes if you're doing different types of genjutsu and stuff, charisma can just be helpful. So it's pretty free reign. The only one I would pretty much assuredly avoid is wisdom. Unless you're really trying to do some kind of genjutsu intelligence operative build, which you can, but just know you're going to be very easy to hit. You're not going to have a whole lot of health. And you're just, you're just going to be overall very squishy. So you'll have to play very careful, at least in combat scenarios. Now, as for clans, intelligence operative is kind of nice because since you have high intelligence, your ninjutsu is going to be good. So you can make just about any clan work. But if you really want to optimize your intelligence operative, there's a few things you want to look for. One, you're probably going to want at least some form of crowd control, some kind of battlefield controlling elements, right? It's just nice to have since pretty much the whole point is you're going to be controlling the battlefield to some extent. It's nice to have some CC. Now, some examples that you can look for. One, Nara, obviously, right? They're the big smart boys of the actual Naruto world. They love using their intelligence for a lot of their abilities. And then they have a ton of crowd control with their shadow paralysis and things of that nature. Another option, you could go with Yamanaka. Now, these guys are a little more genjutsu based, but they have the same kind of concept, right? Of controlling their enemies, things of that nature. And they can also gain some benefits off of intelligence. Now, the last third option, if you're, you know, needing some more advice, Abarame is not too bad either. They're basically going to be in the same vein of Yamanaka, of being able to provide good crowd control and good support for their teammates, but be a little more offensive. So if you like the idea of an intelligence operative, but you also want the damage numbers to be higher, which I can understand, Abarame will be a little better for that because they're going to have a little more offensive capability through their clan jutsu than someone like Yamanaka would. Now get into our last part of character creation, we got jutsus. And... Jutsus are, again, pretty free roaming. You can do a ton of different things. Again, your intelligence score is going to be high, so you're going to be able to use a lot of different ninjutsu pretty dang effectively. But I would really try to focus on things that control the environment. Again, you're an intelligence operative. Your whole kind of shtick is going to be buffing your allies, nerfing your enemies, and kind of moving the battlefield around how you see fit. That being said, things like Bless is a really good starting one because it just buffs your allies. And helps you play that supporting role really well. But if you want a few damage ones in there, it's not gonna hurt you. You'll also probably focus pretty heavily into your clan jutsu, since for the most part, you'll probably be picking a clan that really feeds into that whole controlling aspect. So look for a lot of clan jutsu and then look for some controlling and or buffing jutsus to help the battlefield. When it comes to role play, a few things to expect. One, you're hyper intelligent. So you're gonna know a lot of things, you're gonna be the smart one. You're gonna be really good at figuring puzzles out. If you ever, you know, are trying to figure something out, you'll probably be the one rolling to check for hints or rolling to remember something or anything of that nature, right? You will have hit the books. You'll have your history knowledge, just things of that nature you're gonna be really good at. Typically, you're also gonna take the lead if you're in a team situation. So if you're playing like a fairly typical Naruto 5e campaign where you're in a team with your, with your teammates, right? you're probably going to be that leadership role and you're probably going to be 
taking forward, giving the plans, telling people what to do. So if you don't like having that forward role and you're not the kind of person that really wants to step up and be the leader, I probably wouldn't go intelligence operative because that's for the most part what these guys are going to be really focusing on in their role play. Now getting into what most of y'all came for, that combat, right? That good, good fight, the stuff that a lot of people seem to enjoy in D&D. You're going to be doing a few things. One, as I've said, your intelligence is going to be high. So you're going to be throwing out a lot of ninjutsu. So be ready to be using a lot of different abilities. Two, you're going to be controlling the battlefield. Again, this is a very plan heavy, strategic kind of class. That's really what they focus on and it's what they're really good at. So be ready to in combat, be moving people around, giving orders, giving buffs, giving debuffs. Again, it's going to depend on your subclasses, which we'll get into in a second. But that's your main thing in combat is typically a supporty or if not supporty, still ranged fighter. You're very, very rarely going to get into the mix, into the beef, into the sauce, however you want to word it. You're going to be sitting back and doing from afar. So if that sounds interesting, then awesome. This combat for intelligence operative is for you. Now, just like every other class review slash guide thing that we do here, this class has got subclasses. And in this case, these are your master strategies. Now, the cool thing for intelligence operatives is some of them make you a little more offensive and a little more like aggro into the fight. While still, you know, sitting back, of course, but some other ones make you more supporty, more buff heavy, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So your first option here is going to be the Azure Analyst. Now, these guys are going to be very heavy on analyzing your enemy. Now there's gonna be this next subclass where they also do that, but the key difference is this one is very much in the heat of combat and you get a very broad idea. So you're gonna be analyzing enemies in the middle of the fight, getting a general sense of what they do, right? So like some general kind of things they can do, general options, some general abilities, and just overall some info that will, will help you understand what's going on in the fight. You're not going to get specifics like AC, specific jutsus. You won't usually get anything like that, but you'll understand in a broad sense what the enemy is capable of and what they're going to do right then and there. Now, similar to that subclass, we have the calculated strategist. And the main difference of these people is they're a lot more prep heavy, and you're also going to be creating a bingo book as you go throughout the game. So whenever you do end up analyzing an enemy, which can sometimes be in the heat of combat, but can also be preemptively, you're gonna get very, very specific information. Now you'll only get a little bit and not a broad sense, but you'll get exactly what you wanna hear, whether it's their AC, whether it's jutsus, whether it's anything of that nature, just something that gives you a really tight, okay, we know exactly how to deal with this enemy. And you'll slowly grow that bingo book as you fight more and more people. So if that sounds cool to you, go for it. Now this next one, if you know Kabuto from the show, is gonna be a grave controller. And these guys focus on exactly what he did of basically building an army of corpses. That's what you're doing. Whenever you do defeat someone, you can take their corpse and then summon it in the future. So you're a little bit of a ninjutsu summoner, but instead of actually summoning other animals, in this case, you're just summoning the enemies that you have slain. Now, one thing to keep in mind before you take this subclass is you're taking the corpses of enemies. So if you know that your campaign is not going to be very kill heavy or you're not going to be very big about actually slaying your enemies, the grave controller is not going to be very good for you. So just ensure that murder and killing is a at least somewhat chill thing in your campaign before you take this one or you're not going to have a very good time. And now for one that I think sounds kind of cool, the interrogationist. And they're exactly what you would think they are. If you remember Eno's dad from the show, you're that. You're going to be someone that really likes to rely on capturing your enemies and then getting info out of them, even if the way you're getting the info isn't necessarily morally correct. So that's your big thing is capturing the enemy and then just extracting every bit of info you can. A big part of your combat as well is you're really going to be destroying the morale of your enemies. That's kind of your, your main shtick when in combat. So that sounds like a good time. That's for you. Now here we got the mastermind strategist. And if you're a little self-centered, or at least your character is, this is going to be a really good one to take because one of the things of this character is you're you're pretty self-centered in the sense of you kind of think you are the most important one in the combat. You are the smartest. You are the one that needs to survive, right? And these guys are very single target focused. So a lot of the others tend to focus on more of a battlefield controlling AOE type style. These guys are going to be very big on picking their target and 
finishing them off and really focusing on locking down that one person at a time. So if you like the idea of more just that single target instead of kind of AOE blanket battlefield, these guys are going to be really good for you. Now, if you like the idea of seeing into the future, precognitive is going to be where it's at for you. Now, why these people don't technically see the future, the idea is that they're so good at combat and so good in the moment, they can predict what's going to happen to a near perfect rate, inherently seeing the future. And that's what they really pay attention to is kind of understanding what the enemy's going to do, whether that's actions, jutsus, just any options that they have, and then relaying that information outwards and being able to do things like that. So if you like the idea of being able to predict and or basically see the future, precognitive is yours. Now, if you watch Naruto, you're probably going to know this one anyway, and this is sensory. And these are exactly like the sensory ninjas actually in the Naruto verse, in which your biggest thing is going to be positioning. You're going to know where enemies are. You're going to know if they're hiding, if they're behind something, if they're trying to do something, trying to cast a jutsu. That's where you're going to be really good at. You're going to be able to sense chakra pretty much all around you for a lot of the time. So if you really like the idea of not getting snuck up on and you can pretty much just sense people around you with this magical power, sensory is yours. Now, maybe you like the idea of summoning things, but the grave one isn't really an option, whether it be story-based or you just don't want to have a character that kills a lot of people, shadow hand should be your pick. These guys can inherently summon exactly that, a shadow hand, which is kind of a somewhat copy of themselves to help them out. It's kind of similar to a shadow clone in which they're going to be able to do things, going to be able to buff allies, you're going to be able to use them for intimidation factors, things of that nature. So if you want to be able to create a shadow hand and someone to help you out, but don't like the idea of taking bodies, this is going to be a good choice. Now next up is going to be the tactical strategist. Now these guys do a few things that are pretty neat. One, they're really big on planning. So they'll provide different forms of plans to help their teammates in the fight, how it starts, how it goes all those good things. Another thing they get to do, they get to set little bear traps down and then anyone walks in it, kabooey, ouch, that hurts, right? That's also another thing that they get that's very unique to them is they get a bunch of different types of traps of different kunai traps, poison traps, fire explosive traps, things of that nature. And that's what they really focus on being able to do. So if you like the idea of trapping out your enemies and again, no, not those traps, stop it. Then go with that one. So there you have it, the basics of building an intelligence operative, some clans you could use, jutsus you could use, and kind of what all their subclasses do, so you have an idea of what you want to fall into as you keep going. If you have any other questions per usual, leave them in the comments, I'm always trying to answer what I can. And like I said, if you're going to play intelligence operative, you might as well sub to the channel, because it's one of the smartest things you can do. But nonetheless, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>